Uh, if that wasn't enough for Super Saturday, uh, what about Marvel Stadium? This was breathtaking, not only because of the match itself, but because of how it unfolded. Yeah, well, we continually get to, to say that we're, we're seeing things we haven't seen before. And I certainly haven't seen what happened uh, yesterday at Marvel Stadium. So for those catching up with it, infringement of too many use of interchange. Just uh, let's have a listen as to how it played out in the late stages of the Swans North Melbourne game. That's the, the really clear on-ground explanation there from the umpire relaying the thoughts of the people off the field. Um, ultimately, what needs to be known here is this. 75 interchanges are allowed per club, and what we're about to see is how North Melbourne breached that. The uh, coming off the ground of uh, Liam Shields there and Will Phillips, uh, making it from 74 to 76. That is the breach. Now, that free kick, upon being discovered by the AFL off the ground, it could have been paid anywhere. The ball happened to be in the Sydney Swans forward line, TJ. Had it been in the North Melbourne forward line, it would have been a free kick and 50 metre penalty, but it wouldn't have had the same drastic effect on the scoreboard where it actually ultimately was the match winning goal kicked by the, the Swans. Okay, so can I ask you, the AFL appoint interchange stewards for each team? Yep. Those interchange stewards keep track of how many interchanges there have been? Yep. Okay, and is it normal that those interchange stewards would alert the club interchange person of? them getting close to that maximum? Yeah, I believe it's practice. To, okay, so where did it fall down? Well, it fell down because North Melbourne um, not chose to, but got themselves in a situation where two players came off at the time they only had one left. It's not, it wouldn't have been the first time we've seen the final minutes of a match played by a footy club this year with no interchanges allowed. I mean, mm. people have broadcast that in live time saying they've got none left. So North Melbourne breached it. There's no issue. I've spoken to the AFL today. This is the situation we're talking about. There's no um, ambiguity around what happened. And ultimately, it is on North Melbourne's head. But, yeah, I get that. I get that. And there would be no one feeling as worse as the North Melbourne interchange steward yeah. this morning. And I guess if anyone took five minutes out of a game, if you're there to watch the interchange, and you guys know because you've all played it, it, it is frantic, isn't it? Yeah, it I is. mean, it leaves peak hour for dead. It, it is frantic. And I know when we do the stats for 3AW or Triple M or SEN that, that the number is there on your stats that of interchanges. So that's that number is there too. So... The interchange steward standing up, so it'd be someone who'd be sitting on the bench nearby, and just to let you know we're at 70 now, just to let you know we're at 71 now. So mm. it, it, I know it's easy in hindsight, but the number is there, ticking away like on the stats for everyone to see. Continuation of the um, awkward situation North Melbourne Club finds itself in now. Alistair Clarkson on Thursday officially stood down indefinitely as coach Brett Ratton stood up and he post-match addressed this issue and, and again he's a man of class and, and you can see TJ how he and others at North Melbourne will be dealing with the person involved in it. Now there's sometimes um, a chat about we, we're getting close um, with the rotations but yeah there's nothing from a senior coach's point of view that I'm looking at the interchanges there's so much going on in the game so no we just leave that to the bench. There's a fair bit said about Lance Franklin over the last couple of weeks around his form but he was good yesterday but more in particular the last quarter some of these efforts here to said he wanted to win this game of football he, I think he was stunned by the criticism of his performance and this is the best way he knew how he won the football back defensively kicked a few goals but it was more his defensive actions that would have been really happy for John Longmire tackling and then there was one about 23 seconds to go as well where it's in the middle of the ground laid a big tackle North Melbourne still had one more opportunity to go here it is here they pick it up 23 seconds to go got players out everywhere North Melbourne to the right he's a left footer and he nailed that tackle and the game was over uh, just just before we leave this particular game and all things North Melbourne where are we at with the investigation well, the, the investigation. The, into racism at Hawthorne, uh, which obviously has adversely affected Alistair Clarkson. And we, we've learnt for some time, TJ, Jake Nile on Friday uh, revealing that, th that this is now at the very 
pointy end from an AFL perspective. It will take shape of a significant form beyond Tuesday of this week. There's still a hope of some form of mediation taking place on that particular day. But Clarkson won't appear, Chris Fagan won't appear, Jason Burt won't appear. So only representatives only of those three people will be in appearance. But the AFL will take back the contents of the, its own independent panel's findings after that stage and then it will um, get to an end game. But the uh, allegations and the most serious parts of the racism for, for some time now, for, for those now dealing with this story, have, have felt, TJ, that those cases are not going to be able to be proven and as such it will play out from that as a, as a starting point. And how it looks from a, a sanctions perspective, I'll leave the AFL to finalise it, but that will take shape as of Tuesday, after Tuesday as of this week.